So I am in a totally weird location, hoping that you can see, hoping that you can hear. Let's see. I'm just inviting people, but I am always trying to be respectful of time. So I will be going ahead and starting here in a second. Hopefully I'll be able to see comments. Facebook always acts crazy and doesn't let me do so. So you guys, you're getting the first dibs at this video in, here in the group, but I probably will want to share this video with other people just because I think that it is something that is uh, very important for other people to learn about. Um, and it's a very hard topic to talk about. So we'll just see how it goes and see where we go from here. Now, some of you are new to the group, so if you do not know me, my name is Yashika. I am very passionate about you learning spiritual development tools as well as personal development tools, putting those two things together in order to really help you create the life that you want. I think that if you just go with practical personal development, you're missing out on a whole realm of power that you could have to help propel you towards your dreams. And if you only go totally spiritual, again, I feel like that takes you outside of a big realm of possibility and energy that you can use to um, tap into your highest and best good. So my purpose and why I started my company was to teach personal development and spiritual tools because I think that the two together are where you get the most bang for your buck. And I just know that from personal experience. So what we will be talking about today, and remember, say hi, talk to me if you're here, so I'm not talking to myself. Um, and then that'll help me know if you can hear me and, and all this stuff that Facebook never gets right. Anyway, so what we're talking about today is how to find your life's purpose. We do a master class every month, and that was this month's topic. You all chose this topic. It is a very hard topic to talk about because I don't think that a lot of people understand it. So whatever information that I'm giving you right now is coming from my own personal philosophy, my own personal experience, and what I've learned about life purpose. And then you take with it um, what you will. So you know that I always have notes, so I just want to go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that I want to point out, and I really want, hey, Natalie, and I really want to make this very clear about when you are trying to find your life purpose is I feel like in modern day society, hey, Julie, I feel like we confuse our purpose with our job. I do not think they are the same thing. I do not think what I'm telling you how to find your life's purpose, that I'm telling you how to find a job and a career that you really love. I feel like a job is a modern construct that we as a society have created. And so I just want to throw that out there as we move forward. To me, finding your purpose is not a job. Finding your purpose to me is your mission in life. It is your legacy in life. Um, and so because it is your purpose and your mission and your legacy in life, I don't think that you have one purpose in life. I think that your purpose evolves depending on where you are in life, right? When you're a young child, your purpose may be to get through school, to get on a team, et cetera. And as you grow and grow, your purpose, your um, mission in life, it changes and evolves. So the number, if you feel like you are stuck on finding your purpose, I would invite you to, um, to think about, <laughs> I was reading Julie's comment, she agrees. I will invite you to think about that. Think about, are you trying to think that you were put on this earth, on this planet to do one big overarching thing and that that thing is tied to what you get paid to do? Because that may not be the case and that may be one of the number one reasons why you are confused about what your purpose is here 
um, on this earth. Again, like I said, I think that it evolves. And I actually wanted to take this one step further. Just as you um, and whatever you believe in, there's a there's a reason why you even came into this earth, right? And I think that through that, there was a purpose. But I, so that leads me to believe that if you are co-creating with God, that I also think that you are able to dictate what your purpose is. It's not always this overarching thing that is given to you and then you carry it out. It is a decision that you've made, whether you know consciously or unconsciously, you know, it depends on how self-aware you are. It is a purpose that you have decided that is important to you, a legacy, a mission that is important that you have a say so in that you get to participate in. So that's the other reason why I think that people get stuck on when it is time to think about what your life purpose is. They wait for somebody to tell them or they wait for a revelation when in fact you are the decision maker about what your purpose is. Part of the purpose of life for all of us is to create heaven on earth. And when I say heaven on earth, I mean that there are some innate traits that have to do with matter and how you can take a thought and make it become a physical manifestation. And to me, that's bringing heaven into earth. That's um, making something that's in the ether something very real. And I think that that is one of our purposes that we all share. And so one of your purposes on this earth is just to know that you are the deciding factor in how, what manifests in your life and what your life looks like and to reclaim or learn about or um, tap into that power that you truly have. I think that we often miss that part of our purpose in life too. The purpose of life is for you to make it however you want to. You are an active participant. You shape it and at any time that you decide to change it, you can change it and you can shape it into something else. When you start to put yourself in a box of around it being your job or um, maybe you look at somebody and they knew that they wanted to be a doctor their whole life and you're confused that you don't know why you what you want to be when you grow up, that's not your purpose. That's something totally different. But once again, you get to decide what you want. And at any time that you don't like whatever is being shown to you or being created, you get to decide to do something else. Maybe that person that decided they wanted to be a doctor, that may or may not be their purpose. That just may be something that they're good at or, good at or something that they're passionate about. But that doesn't mean that that is their purpose here on this earth. So let's separate the two, but the, let's also take ownership of the fact that you get to create whatever your purpose is. I also wanted to bring up to you guys that I feel like a lack of purpose stems from a lack of alignment. Um, and so I want to go a little bit further. So for those of you that are confused about maybe you don't know what you want to be when you grow up, or maybe you feel like you don't have a direction or a purpose in life, I would ask you, how is your connection to your intuition? Um, how is your connection to the opportunities that uh, happen in your life or the things that present themselves in your life? Are you open to them? Or another thing that I think that, that really blocks people is how are you releasing the old? So I will go a little bit deeper into each of these three things and hope that they make sense. Remember, to me, I feel like talking about life purpose is difficult. So I hope that I'm conveying <laughs> what I am trying to convey. So if you feel like um, you are lacking purpose, usually you are lacking a sense of direction. Like I said, you have the ability to dictate your purpose and your legacy. So you don't lack purpose, you lack alignment with, um, with the truth, the truth about who you are. And that comes from a lack of not being able to connect to who you are. We are, for various reasons, unable to connect to who we are. It could be our parents taught us not to listen to ourselves. It could be we tried and we got shut down. It could be um, it just doesn't make logical sense, so we don't pay attention to it. 
yada, yada, yada. But the, at the end of the day, if you don't have a connection to your own personal internal truth, your own personal inner compass, what you are going to find is that you lack alignment, you lack direction. And because you lack direction, you may confuse that with lacking a sense of purpose. And it's all stemming back to the fact that you don't have a connection with yourself. Because if you have that connection with yourself, what you will find happens in your life is not that big and answers are revealed or um, big answers kind of unfold right before your eyes. Sometimes it happens that way. Most of the time it doesn't. What you will find though is that that little connection that you have to yourself will guide you step by step by step. And through those steps, you build upon yourself, you grow and you mature into a person that is moving toward a legacy, a purpose, and moving with direction and um, intent. I guess that's what I want to say. So, so that's the number one thing. Number two thing that I see in clients when they feel like they are lost and they don't know what their purpose is, is they don't stay open. So I already talked about staying open to the possibility that you are able to create your um, purpose in life but they don't stay open to opportunities. Maybe they expect things to be in a certain way. One thing that gets all of us in some way or another is a relationship, right? And we lack the ability to open ourselves up to new opportunities in relationships because they don't come to us the way that we picture them to be. And because of that, we miss out on partners that are perfect for us. And we settle for partners that maybe aren't good for us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's all because we are not staying open to the infinite possibilities that are available to us. Um, and some of it is out of fear, right? You want to stay in your comfort zone because you don't know what's on the other side of the decision that you will make to go against your own ingrained patterns, beliefs, and attitudes. So that's the number two thing that I see with clients that keep them stuck and not living in purpose. And then they don't want to release the old. They don't want to release old beliefs, behaviors. They don't want to release people. They don't want to release habits. They don't want to release relationships. People are so scared to release the things that don't serve them, to release the things that they know and they feel that are not in alignment with them. A few days ago, I almost did like this big rant <laughs> video. You guys know when I come in and I did the rants. And the reason why I did that is because people will swear up and down that they don't know their purpose. They're not um, in tune with their intuition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when really we are, we just don't want to do it. We're scared to do it. We're scared to dump somebody that we've been obligated with or we are codependent with. And we know good and damn well that that relationship doesn't serve us. We're scared to leave our job because we don't know what's on the other side of leaving that job. And so we try to pretend like we don't have um, a connection to our intuition or we don't have a connection to our purpose when we are getting signals and hunches and gut feelings all day long about these situations, but we're too scared um, to take the leap to actually do something. So a lot of the times what I find is that people don't not know what their purpose is. They're too scared to leave a situation that they know is not for them, but may be comfortable to go out and find what that purpose is. So, um, and I'll talk about this more. One of the first steps in finding your life purpose is knowing what is not in alignment with you. And we all usually know what is not in alignment with us, but the key is, are we brave enough to, um, take the steps we need to take to actually step into our purpose. You are not going to have your purpose revealed to you if you want to continue to hold on tight to things that don't serve you. I'm just going to tell you that right now. It's not like somebody going to bop you upside the head and say, oh, you know what? You're supposed to be doing this in life. While you're in a crappy situation, you're not working on yourself, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's not the way it happens, especially when Many things have been tried, have been, let me, how can I phrase it? Maybe like the universe has tried to take things away from you, 
but because you have been so scared to let go of them, you've held on so tightly to them. So you are almost like counteracting that energy that will help propel you into your purpose and your legacy. So until you can get that connection with your intuition, learn how to stay open to possibilities, even if they don't look the way you want them to, or even if they seem scary and release old stuff, you are going to find that you are going to be further and further away from your life purpose. Does anybody have any questions about what I'm saying so far? All right, so <laughs> I don't see any question. I'm gonna keep going. So this is another thing that I want you to do. Because I feel like a purpose is now tied to a job or a career, I want you to change that word because again, I don't think that is our true purpose in life. A purpose in life, life is precious and life is special. And to be a soul in a human body and to be able to do the things that you do or the way that your body works, the, the way the cells work, et cetera, et cetera, there is no way that we, you were put on this earth just to go to a job. I don't care if it's your side hustle. I don't care if it's your nine to five. That is not your purpose in life. So I need you to go a little bit deeper than that, than your job, than your side hustle. And I want you to think about changing the word purpose with the word legacy. Because I think if you change that word, life will start to have a little bit more meaning for you and a little bit more purpose indirectly for you. So you're asking yourself, how do I find my legacy? And if you think about legacy, legacy is something that you want to create in your life that's long lasting. It's something that you want to create in your life. Uh, maybe if you have a family that you pass on from generation to generation. It's something that you want to live on even though you have passed. That's what your legacy is. So if you thought about your purpose in terms of what your legacy is, I think it would be much easier for you to figure it out. So how does that shift you when you say, legacy instead of purpose. If you thought about the lasting impact that you want to have, how would you then live? That is where you find your purpose. I'm going to say that again. What is the lasting impact that you want to have after you're gone? No matter how that is. What is the lasting impact that you want to have and if you think about that, the second question you need to ask yourself, well, then how would you live? That right there is your purpose. And then the second question you want to find, you want to ask, because this will show you where you're out of alignment. Because remember, I told you purpose and direction comes from being an alignment which is connected to your intuition. But if you thought about the lasting impact you wanted to have and then thought about, okay, so you know what the lasting impact is. So now how would you live your life to leave that lasting impact? The third question you need to ask yourself is what's stopping you? What's stopping you? What's stopping you from doing all those things that you would need to do the way you would need to live in order to leave that lasting impact, that legacy that you thought about for yourself. And that is your answer to why you are not living in your purpose. Um, so, so that's like a big, a big spiritual um, overview around purpose, because I promise you, you're going to look for it in more tangible things like I said, like your job, like your career, and you may find yourself coming up empty, coming up short because you may be chasing the wrong thing. And um, so I, I just want to show you that it's, just, it's really your legacy, it's really your purpose. And if you look, a bit, look at it from that lens, you'll be able to answer that question more easily and get more easily in alignment and you will be able to make decisions that propel you toward your legacy and it may not have to do with a job it may have to do with how you spend time with your children how you show up in your relationships 
how you treat yourself, how you um, approach your mindset and the way that you think and believe and your attitude towards your life. Those may be the things that will shift and inherently what you will see is that if you shift into a different person based on the legacy that you want to leave behind, the last part you'll notice is that your earth will shift, your opportunities will shift, your job will shift, your career will shift. But it doesn't start out here, guys. It starts inside of you and um, it starts with who you are and how you show up for life. All right, so I'm going to bring, bring it down to earth, though, a little bit, because for some of you, you may have to think about what I just said previously. So I want to bring it back down to something that is a little bit more tangible and just give you some more questions that you can ask yourself. For instance, what are you good at but you don't love? That may be a key to your purpose. Your purpose may not be something that you love. That is so fake, so false. I wish that myth would go away. There is many a times where people have had purposes in this lifetime and they didn't love what they did, but they knew it was important and they showed up and they did the work, right? We all had ancestors that have been through the muck for whatever they wanted to fight for. It could be women fighting for freedom. It could be spiritual people that were burned for being witches. It could be so many different, you know, black people, my people, you know, getting beat just for the color of their skin and having to stand up for that. Was that something that they loved? Hell no. But it's something that they needed to do. And it's something that they were good at because maybe they were brave. Um, maybe they were not afraid to speak up. Maybe they were not afraid to fight for something. So don't discount the fact that your purpose and your legacy could be something that you are good at, but you may not love. Because to me, something that you love and something that you're passionate about could be a hobby. It may not be your purpose. It just may be another facet or another um, layer of who you are. You're not just a one dimensional person. So what are you good at, but you don't love? Make a list of all those things. That could be a clue right, to get you a little bit closer. The second question you can ask yourself is, what do you love, but you aren't good at? Because that could be a clue there. Maybe you just need to gain some skills and education to be able to step into something that you really do love, but maybe at this place and point in time in your life, you're just not ready to step into that. So these are two areas that I want you to think about. And then the third area is what haven't you tried so you don't know if you love it and you don't know if you're good at it. The reason why I want you to look at these three things, particularly that third question, what haven't you tried so you don't know if you're good at it, is because your life purpose may be in something that you haven't tried and it may be something that you haven't been open to trying. And it may be something that if you were to open yourself up to new experiences and new opportunities, you would find yourself moving much closer to your life purpose. If all of that confuses you, and the first part of this um, masterclass was going a little bit too deep, one thing that I could tell you that I've done in my own personal life was look at somebody that was what I consider to be a role model. They may not be doing what I want to do, but maybe they have achieved a level of success in their lives that I admire. And so if you start to look at successful people and um, or a person that you admire, think about or study what their life was like, what their journey was. And you'll find that they may not have just went from A to B. They may have had to go through spirals and evolutions to get to where they are now. But the most important thing that they do is they leave you clues. So if you feel a loss and you feel like you don't know where to go or you feel directionless or you feel a lack of purpose or you don't know what your legacy should be, who is it that you admire? And then look at the things about them that you admire and what is it that you could emulate? I didn't say imitate, but what is it that about them that you could emulate 
in order to help start to move you at least in a direction of adopting habits and actions that will help align you with your purpose. Because remember, as you start to become a certain person, your world shape shifts around you. You could also think about this person and you could think about um, like what would they do if they were in your shoes? So maybe you can't see it because you're in it, but let's say Oprah is a good one. If Oprah was in your life right now, what do you think Oprah would do to get from where they, from where you are now to that next level? What would Oprah do? If she would she continue to be in a crappy relationship where she was mistreated or that was going nowhere or there was no growth or opportunity, do you think she would stay in a career that wasn't congruent with what it who it was that she really wanted to be? Or even if she didn't know who she wanted to be, do you think she would continue to let her life get sucked from her in a situation when she knew that there was better for her? So you may not know the specifics, but you may know the feeling that you want to feel. And so if you're feeling lost or trapped or anxious or stuck, think about somebody you admire and think about how they would navigate that same situation that you were in and compare that to what you are doing now. And maybe that could be some clues for you to start to shift in a different direction. Let's see. I did write in my notes to pay attention to what makes you happy, but I think happiness is overrated because there are there are many things that are tied to my purpose that do not make me happy, but I have to do them because it's just an inherent part of the overall legacy that I want to leave behind. So again, to me, is happiness is overrated. People are selling uh, you know, selling you this false bill of goods around happiness. And if you live your, um, if you do whatever you love, you won't work a day in your life. Not true. <laughs> There's going to be days where it's going to feel hard and it's going to feel like work. So I did write that I do want you to tap into your happiness, but I don't want you to think that your legacy is always going to make you happy because there are always evolutions in growth and maturity and, and um, building solid foundations that are not happy. They are grueling. They are stressful. They are sometimes deflating. They are sometimes overwhelming. So I, I don't want you to think living your legacy or, you know, trying to move into the space that you want to be is going to be all roses because it's not. And so if you think that that may be why you don't feel like you're living your purpose, I want you to examine that because some of you are already living your purpose, but you are discounting that because you are expecting that you will feel a certain way. And, um, that may not be true. Let's see what else. Anybody have any questions? I'm just like rambling. I feel like I'm just talking, talking, talking. Any questions? Anybody? I'm gonna keep on talking then. <laughs> All right. So another thing that I wrote up is uh, what patterns crop up in your life. So let's say you don't know what your legacy is, but what are some patterns that crop up in your life? Because they could be clues to your deeper purpose and your deeper legacy. It could be love. Do you have issues in relationships? Does your family have um, problems in relationships? Are there generational patterns and curses that need to be broken? Is there something that you could be teaching or helping others with? These are all clues um, that could crop up in your life through patterns and synchronicities. So I, I want you to pay attention to that as far as your purpose. Another thing that will help you really shift into your legacy real quick is to stop being so self-centered about it and think about what is a gift that you could give to others and how do you contribute. And we all have something to contribute. We all have something that we have taught people or we all have something that we have had to work on for ourselves. And in that space of healing becomes or birth an opportunity for you to be able to help other people. So 
there are there may be a gift that you are supposed to give others or you're supposed to contribute to others in some way and in that um, births your legacy or your purpose the quickest way for anything the quickest way out of depression the quickest way out of feeling stuck the quickest way out of not knowing what your purpose or legacy is the quickest answer to a lot of the issues in life that get us down is to help other people i promise you when you start to give um, unconditionally to other people and be of service to other people, you will find that that creates the biggest vibrational shift in your life and it starts to open up doors for you that you would not have ever imagined. So that is another clue. Let's see. I've already talked about mindset and intuitive work being a key. If you're not working on your mindset or your intuition, then you are going to have issues when you are trying to find your life purpose. You also must be patient. Like I said, your life purpose changes. You help dic dictate your life purpose and it evolves. So for you to think that you're just going to get this big revelation of everything that you need to do and have your life all mapped out for you, it is gonna, you're you being delusional about it. And by doing that and expecting that, all it's doing is making you frustrated and making you feel even more depressed and overwhelmed and stuck because you feel like you're not where you need to be or you're not on the path that you should be on when in fact it doesn't work that way. So you're really going to have to have patience and quietness and stillness, but you also have to be brave enough to cut out distractions. Distractions could be food, distractions could be drugs, people, environments, etc. Because what you are doing when you are allowing all these different things to claim space in your life and in your mind is you're not allowing yourself that quietness to tap into your intuition and to work on your own mindset, to tap into your own mindset in spite of what's going on around you and in the world. So you really have to be brave enough to cut out distractions and you also have to be brave enough to try new things. One thing that will quickly tell you take you away from wasting time is to not do things that you know are not good for you. That's the easy part, right? So if you know you don't like something and you know it's not good for you, stop doing it. Don't ever do it again. Don't ever compromise on that. If you just cross that off and don't look back, you're already moving in the right direction. But you also need to be open and brave enough to try new things because there is a whole world of opportunity out there for you. And if you don't know what your legacy is, part of finding your legacy is in trying new things. And the more things that you try, the more your eyes are open and the more you tap into yourself and the more you learn more about yourself and learn more about the different parts of yourself. Um, I'll, I'll give you like a simple example, right? If, if I had never left my hometown, like I'm a unique little person, but I grew up in the Midwest. Let's say it's not a small town. It's a medium sized metropolitan area. If I had never left that place, I would just be stuck in that point of view. But then you start to travel and then you start to experience new things and meet new people and learn new things. And as you start to grow, you start to learn that there's so much more to life. There's so many more things to experience. And, you know, that opens and broadens your horizon. So you really have to be brave enough to try out things that you've never done before. If you want to really expand and grow and create a legacy that is purposeful and strong and um, with intent and with purpose. I hope that makes sense too. Let's see. Spend time in solitude learning about yourself. I already talked to you too. Some of you have trauma. And so if you want to know where your purpose in life is or where your legacy should be, it may be connected to your trauma and what you do to heal that trauma. And I did say that in your healing, you can help other people. But if you don't feel called to help other people, sometimes just by healing your own personal trauma, it um, it shifts the energy of your life and any people that you touch going forward so that it kind of 
cuts the ties with that trauma. And that could be your legacy because it, you, we all know that we pass things down from generation to generation. It gets so embedded in us that it is embedded deeply into our physical DNA. And you may just need to be that trigger or that person that cuts the tie. And you don't cut the tie by trying to convince other people in your family to adopt a new way of life. You cut ties by becoming something different through healing, through growing, and through evolving. And as you do that, and as you pass down whatever you've learned, that starts to shift and evolve things um, in a different way for your family, for the people that you come into contact with, and for yourself. I'm going to pause for a minute. Every makes perfect sense. Well, I was just talking about this during one of my readings today. Yes. Um, you got, um, Sakai, the group had asked for me to talk about uh, the per life purpose. So I was talking about it again. I don't really believe in life purpose. I believe in a legacy. So anyway, let me wrap this up because I feel like I've been talking forever. I already said you may not get paid for your purpose. It may not be a job. It may not be a career. And it may not be one thing. Your purpose should be something that feels primarily spiritual. It may be what you need to learn or what you need to transform. And it may be something that's hard for you to achieve. So again, I had talked about love. If you find yourself meeting different people and noticing the same patterns crop up in your relationship, your purpose may be tied to that relationship. It may be tied to unconditional love. It may be tied to your purpose being learning self-esteem and self-love and self-worth, um, et cetera. Or it may be tied around acceptance and um, working on yourself because there's nothing wrong with the person that you're with. There may be some issues that you need to deal with internally. Uh, focus on what you don't want. What do you want to avoid? So I've already talked about that. If you already know things are not good for you, avoid them because when you let them back into your life, all you're doing is confusing yourself. There, I strongly believe that there's no way that you can fully step into your power, your purpose, and your legacy when you're leaving the same crap in your life that you know is not good for you. So I'm just going to leave it like that and not keep repeating it. Another thing you may want to look at is what is pulling you. Purpose isn't a big reveal, like I told you. It's a slow unveiling, but this is the problem. We're weak and we're not brave, and so we avoid doing what pulls us, so we miss the unveiling of the direction we should go. So I talked about this earlier too, but I just want to like, uh, this will be my last point and then I will close it for questions, but this will be my last point. So you, again, may feel confused. This may be something you may have to listen to over and over again. You may have to write out the questions. If I have time later in the week, I'll come back in the group and link every question that I've asked and put it in a worksheet for you so you can kind of journal with it. But another thing that we often do is we have something that's pulling us. Um, it could be trying to pull us out of a situation, out of a relationship, out of a job, out of a city, out of a situation that is no longer for our highest and best good. And I'm not saying that it has to be something bad, but you just feel like this force is just trying to pull you forward and out of a certain situation that you're in, but because we're weak and because we're scared and because we're not brave, we don't let that energy pull us. We don't honor that pull and take the steps to make that a more easy process. We fight that energy that's pulling us forward. And when we do us, we miss the unveiling of the direction that we should go because at some point, that pulling force is just going to give up. Is going to give up until you are more open and ready to do the work. Um, and that's what I talk about when I say that intuitively, people will say they don't have an attachment to their intuition or they feel like they don't hear their intuition, but they do. And they just are not brave enough to honor it and do what it says. And so you act like you can't hear it because you don't want to do what it tells you to do.
And so that's the same thing. This pull is trying to get you to do something that maybe you don't want to do. You don't feel like doing. You make up excuses for why you can't do those things. And in that fighting of that pulling, you disconnect from your purpose, your direction, your intuition, God, whatever you want to call it. You disconnect from that energy because you have dishonored it. And it makes it that much harder for you to get back on track and really step into that power when you don't honor the power that's calling you in the moment. Um, let's see. Makes, oh, I already said makes from set. Yep, cut the cords and learn how to detach. Learn how to detach and then learn how to recognize that you need to not detach from that situation, detach from it, period. So one relationships we all been there so that's why i keep using that once you detach from a shitty relationship that doesn't mean you get to go back into a shitty relationship and act like you didn't know that you were entering a shitty relationship when you know better you do better and if you know that part of your legacy is to have this sort of a loving um example or a loving energy that you want to experience and that you want to leave in this world and impart upon somebody else then you don't get to go into a different relationship doing the same crap that you did before that's the thing so you know sometimes we say we detach because we detach from a person but then you go and you get with the same, a same person and you allow the same crap or you allow crap that's not in alignment with your legacy and then you mess it all up all right, so I'm done talking. I talked a lot. Um, the biggest thing is the action steps. You need to change what you're doing. Just change. If you are used to responding in one way to something, just do the opposite of it. If you feel confused, do the opposite of what you would normally do and watch your world shift right on up. Try a lot of different things. Expand your horizons. Think about how you can help others. Do more of the things that um, you love or that you are good at or if you don't know try new things but the biggest thing that I want you to do is say how to how what is your life legacy not your purpose what is your legacy think about what it is that you really want to leave on this earth if you were dead and people were at your funeral what would you want them to say about you that is your purpose. That is your legacy. And when you think about your legacy and what you want these people to say about you, does your life look like it needs to look right in this moment in order for them to say those things about you? If it does not, then what do you need to do? What do you need to tighten up? What do you need to change in order for them to say the things that you would hope that they would say about you when you are gone? That is all that you need to do to move into your legacy. And once you do that, you will find that you will have a clear mission and vision and direction for how you want your life to go. And anything that comes into your life that is not in alignment with the legacy that you want to leave behind, you have to be brave enough and strong enough to say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going there. And, and, and hold yourself to the standard that you've set for yourself by doing that exercise. All right, guys, I have blabbed my mouth for so long. Like I said, I'll try to make the worksheet for you. Um, does anybody have any questions about their life purpose? Anybody have any specific questions that they would like me to answer regarding their life purpose? I'll wait for a couple of minutes just in case there's a lag. But while I'm waiting... I want you guys to know that if you want to go a little bit deeper on some of the topics that I've touched on in this live, so around mindset, around um, attitudes, ideas, and beliefs, around how to really quiet and still yourself so that you can learn to heal your, hear yourself, and around your intuition, these are some of the things that are going to help propel you into your legacy and your purpose. And if you want to dive deeper and learn more about that, I have a free five video course for you. And I have left the link in the description of this video so you can check that out. Um, otherwise, I am going to let you guys go. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.